Hello, beloved, and welcome to another Bible study where we are studying deception. This is part two in our study on deception. I believe that the world is, is just so rampant with deception that it's important for us to understand where does it come from, how does it work. So I hope that this Bible study just brings a little bit of, of clarity, brings a little bit of light to the, to the subject of deception. Now, Before we continue, let's just have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much that we can come to you in Jesus' precious name. Thank you for your love and kindness towards us, and thank you that we can look at this topic. I pray that you will help us to understand and help us to take to heart, so that we will not be caught by the deceptive um, actions of the unsaved. Father, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As I said last week, one of the things that we need to understand is that deception is not just uh, rampant in the world out there. I believe that deception is even in the church. There are false teachers that are deceiving God's people intentionally. Uh, as Jude said it, they, they creep into the church. They come in unnoticed. And then what they do is they deceive God's people. The last time we looked at uh, the fact that the tongue is the instrument of deception and the fact that God abhors uh, deception. It, it is an abomination in God's sight, in fact. God cannot handle deception. No, well, God can handle anything, but if you hear what I'm saying, God cannot stand deception because deception is just the opposite of honesty, the opposite of openness, the opposite of truth, the opposite of who God is because God is perfectly holy. God, God is uh, perfectly just. And, and because He is perfectly holy and perfectly just, God is against uh, anyone who comes to uh, forth with, with, with deceitful ways. All right. This is important to understand. Now, another thing about deception that I think is important that we need to understand is that God forbids deception. He's clear on it. Uh, in, in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 28, we read, Do not be a witness against your neighbor without cause. All right, so... If your neighbor does something that is wrong, then obviously you need to be a witness to, to testify. If your neighbor did something that is not wrong and you've seen what happened, you need to be a uh, have, to, have to testify on behalf of your neighbor. But the proverb says very beautifully, Do not be a witness against your neighbor without cause. For would you deceive with your lips? Would you tell lies? Would you mislead with your lips? Would you not tell the truth with your lips? Okay. So th that's kind of the, the question that is being asked. How in the world is it possible for a believer, somebody that, that, that how can I say, that follows in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, who is perfectly holy, who is the perfect one that walked on this, on this earth. How in the world can somebody that walks in the footsteps of Jesus Christ then go around and witness against the, uh, their neighbor without a cause? and deceive with their lips it's not possible that's not how christians are supposed to be all right so god forbids it he says you should not okay do not uh, be a witness against your neighbor without cause all right don't make your your tongue your lips guilty of deceit in any way uh, we read in first uh, peter chapter 3 verse 10 it says, he would, he would love life and see good days. Let him, or he who wants to see, uh, love life and he would like to see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and let his lips, or and his lips from speaking deceit. He needs to keep his mouth, his tongue from, from being a fraudful thing, from telling lies, from being crafty from misleading with his or her tongue. God clearly forbids it in his word. And I think we need to take heed of this. It should not be part of being a believer is to be deceitful. We, we should not even get close to it. We should speak the truth in love at all times. We should not go around, um, you know, and, and, and speak things and, and say things at the end of the day that are deceitful. All right, so God forbids deception. God's standard is so high that deception is not part of God's standard. God abhors it. 
abhors it. I don't know how to exactly pronounce that. But anyway, another thing that we need to know about deception is that the unsaved are characterized by deception. Eh? Yeah. And, and the way that they, they, they are characterized by deception is they deceive by being dishonest, by being deceptive, by misleading and, and misleading through lies and half-truths. It's something that the unsaved do. They are characterized by deception. Believers are not characterized by deception. The believers are characterized by the truth. They do not go around with deception, the deceptive words. They do not go around misleading people. They speak the truth in love. They are not dishonest. All right. Now, when we talk about the unsaved, it is clear that Scripture teaches us that... The unsaved are full of deception. In Romans 1 verse 29, yeah, we find a list of, of the sin which basically which the unsaved do. Nah? It's a list of sins that the unsaved are involved in. And one of those sins is deceit. You see, it's a character trait of the unsaved. It's not a character trait of the saved. People who are saved will not mislead through deceit. The seed is not found in their mouth. Truth is. All right, so you will see that the unsaved are full of deception. But they, they, their mouths are not just full of deception, or they are not just full of deception. They actually devise deception. Psalm 35 verse 20 says, that They, and that's the enemies of David, do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful matters against um, the quiet ones of the land so what happens is the enemies of david they don't speak peace they don't speak the truth in love they don't want peace with israel no what they do is they devise deceitful matters so they come up with deceitful things to mislead god's people that's what the unsaved do they devise deception that's what they do. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 5, we, we read that the thought of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. So, basically, the, the thought of the righteous are, how can I say, are right. The way that the righteous think, because they are think righteous, thinking righteously, they are thinking the truth, they want to speak the truth in love, but the advice of the wicked... They are deceitful. It's misleading. They distort the truth or they withhold the truth so that they can get you into captivity because that's why people are deceitful. Is when, when somebody is deceitful, what they want is they want to get you under their power. It's kind of getting you under their spell so that they can control you. That, that is kind of the purpose. And that's what the, the unsaved are brilliant at it. And the false teachers in the church are brilliant with it. And the unsaved who are in the church parading as believers, they are absolutely brilliant with it. They distort with the truth. They withhold the truth. They mislead with deceptive words. They mislead God's people. Watch out for that. Because they devise deception, these un unbelievers. It is what they do. It's how they think. It's as if their minds are, are made up of deception. They're always going around seeing how they're going to deceive people, how they're going to mislead people, how they can distort, distort the truth to, to actually fit their narrative. And especially the world that, that we're living in today. Wow. It is just heartbreaking to see how the leftists, you know, the people on the far left of the spectrum, how the mainstream media, how they distort the truth, how they mislead people, how they deceive people by speaking half-truths. And, and they have a narrative that they are pushing and how they withhold truth so that at the end of the day they can get people into their power and, and keep them there by these half-truths and these lies that they are telling and these, these fraudulent things that they are bringing to the people. In, in Psalm 38 verse 12, we read of David's enemies, how they plan deception all day long. This is how David describes it. Eh? They are devising planning deception all day long because their intent is to get people under their power to to basically control people that's the 
their, their desire, that's what they want to do. Heartbreaking to talk about this, but this is the reality. You just have to look at what politicians do. Why are they lying to people? Why are they deceiving people? Why are they misleading people? Why are they speaking half-truths? Why are they withholding truth? Why are they doing these things? Because they want to get people to vote for them. And the only way they can get people to vote for them is they have to mislead people. They have to deceive people so that people don't even realize they're being deceived. So they, they can continue to, to vote for these liars, these deceivers. They just continue to lie for, to, to, to vote for them. Even though these deceivers and these liars have been lying for so long, they've been deceiving, misleading with half-truth and, and, and non-truths. They... they their paths are just scattered with lies. Yet the people still go after them. Because that's what they do. Those who are evil devise deception all day long. That's all they can do. Is they come up with all these crooked narratives. And these crooked schemes. To deceive those who are honest. Those who are hard working. Those who are God fearing. Those who want to do the right thing. These deceivers want to deceive those people. That's what the wicked wants to do. Another thing that happens is when they speak, they utter deception. Psalm, and, uh, Psalm, Psalm 10 verse 7 says that the mouth of the wicked is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. The mouth of the wicked is full of cursing. That means to, to violate the covenants. So what they do is they, they will curse what is supposed to be truth. So they will come up with, or there would be a covenant that was made, an agreement that was made, and they would just curse that agreement. They would just destroy that agreement. That's what they do. Because that's what they do. They do it. They do it with their mouths. They violate covenants. But they also, how can I say, their mouths are full of deceit. Nah. Oh. And, and deceit is to intentionally mislead people. And the way they do it is by distorting the truth and just withholding the truth. That's what deception is. Distorting truth, withholding truth. Intentional misleading of people. And let me tell you, the world is full of deceit in the day that we are living in. It is full of deceit. Unfortunately, it is heartbreaking to see how much deceit is going around. How much people are basically violating agreements that they've made. Right, but it also says that the mouth of the wicked is not just full of cursing or this violating of covenants or deceit, but it's full of oppression. That is putting people under pressure the whole time, putting people under fear. That's what the wicked does, is they keep people oppressed because they've got to keep people in fear. Beloved, we're living in the time and age of fear. Everybody is fearing everything. It is heartbreaking to see, but that's what the, the, the unsaved do. That's what the wicked do. They just speak with utter deception. All right. They violate covenants. They intentionally mislead. They distort the truth. They, they, they withhold the truth. And they, they put people under pressure. They put people under fear because they oppress people. That's what they do. In Psalm uh, 36 verse 3, we read about the wicked who have no fear for God. And therefore, their words are wickedness and deceit. And the reason why the, their words are wickedness and deceit, the reason why they violate the covenants and why they intentionally mislead people and why they put people under pressure and fear is because they do not fear God. Because if they feared God, they would not put people under pressure. They would not um, instill fear into people. They would not oppress people. No, they will not intentionally deceive people and mislead people and distort the truth and withhold the truth and violate the, the agreements that they've made. They will not do it if they really truly fear God, but they don't. Because that's what the wicked does. They speak and they utter deception. All right. Whenever they speak, they utter deception. But the other thing is they not only speak utter deception, the unsaved actually works deception. In Proverbs 11, verse 18, we read that the wicked man does deceptive work. He is unstable in what he does. He, he, he does not bring lasting fruit. He just brings disappointment. 
That's why Proverbs says that a wicked man does deceptive work. He is unstable in what he does. His work is deceptive. His work is unstable. Uh, it comes to nothing. It, it, it sounds so much like the politicians of today. The they promise you heaven on earth, but they produce hell. Because their works are deceptive. What they tell you and what they do are two different things. There is no lasting fruit in what they do. They, they will tell you, oh, we're going to turn things around, but they do not turn things around. It is it's deception that they are speaking. I mean, everybody was hoping that um, with this Rama, Ramaphobia, né? where everybody believed that Ramaphosa was going to turn everything around. We've been into his presidency for how long? Things have just gotten worse. Oh, he will blame um, the COVID pandemic for it, for sure. Yes, he will always blame the pandemic. They always have something to blame or someone to blame. They never take the blame for themselves because they work deception. That's what they do. They work deception. They, they are unstable in what they do. They, their works do not bring forth fruit, especially not righteous fruit. It always disappoints. People are always disappointed with what the wicked does and what the unsaved does when they work deception. Am I saying that Ramaphosa is unsaved? I cannot say that. I cannot see the heart of a person. But let me tell you, when I look at his works, his works has come, has, has come to nothing. For all the time that he's been in office, all the times that he was the um, deputy president, and all the times that he was in parliament and with negotiations and whatever, he hasn't achieved much. He has achieved very, very little. In fact, he is a great disappointment. That's my personal opinion. I mean, you don't have to take it. Remember, we've got liberty of conscience, which means you can believe whatever you want. That's fine. It's not a problem. That's my observation. Uh, that's when I listen to polit political analysts and they say how disappointing um, his tenure has been. Th then it kind of sounds very much like the, this, this man who does deceptive works. Not work, I mean. Th that he's unstable in what he does. He's not consistent in what he does. And you will find these politicians always walking after the trend of the day, speaking this and then speaking that and then speaking this and then speaking that. Whatever the trend is, they will follow that trend. All right. And, and their work doesn't have lasting fruit. It just comes to nothing. But it's not just politicians. If you look at false teachers, you can look at their lives as well. You can look at the fruit of their ministry. It just comes to nothing. All right. But the unsaved will also increase in deception, the scripture tells us. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, we read, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, which means they will mislead by distorting the truth or withholding the truth. They will just increase in it. They will get worse and worse and worse. And let me tell you, we can see it, that the world is getting worse and worse and worse. Oh, beloved, it's so true that the unsaved and the unbelieving, the, the false teachers, the, the, the wicked increase in deception. They don't walk away from deception. They, not, they don't talk the truth more and more. They withhold the truth. They distort the truth more and more. They don't come up with the truth more and more. They don't bring it to the foreground. No, they, they hide behind their lies more and more and more. That's what they do. But then also the unsaved uses deception on each other uh, that's why satan's kingdom is so divided because you see the unsaved use deception on each other unfortunately we're seeing it in the church as well but i don't believe that a believer will deceive another believer on purpose i believe that false teachers and false believers people that profess to be believers but they're not they will deceive others they will deceive one another now jeremiah 9 verse 15 says everyone will, de will deceive his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They weary themselves to commit iniquity. So everyone will deceive his neighbor and will not speak the truth. Um, they have taught their tongue to speak lies. That's what the wicked does. That's what the unsaved does. They will deceive one another. They will deceive their neighbors. That's a bad place to be, beloved. 
But we are seeing it happen today. How people will just, just turn on one another. And it's so heartbreaking. But they, they will also deceive themselves. That's another thing that the scripture teaches. If you go down to Jeremiah 37 verse 9. You read that uh, where God told Israel not to deceive themselves. Because that's what was happening. Do not deceive yourself. Jeremiah 37 9. But there's something that we all possess that is deceptive. Deceitful above all things. And that's the heart. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says... Deceitful is the heart above all things, and desperately who could, we could, who can know it? Well, we know who knows the heart. That's God, because God searches the heart. He knows our innermost being. He knows everything about us. So God searches the heart. He knows it. But our own hearts deceives us. Because the heart of a man is deceitful. Why? Because it's got a sinfulness. We have a sinful nature. We have a sinfulness in our heart. We have a heart that is sinful, inclined to sin. We cannot trust our hearts. We can only trust the truth of God's word. Of God's revelation. That we can trust. But we cannot trust our hearts. Alright. Because we deceive our own selves. So many times. Don't trust your heart. And it's interesting how the world will tell you. Just follow your heart. Whatever your heart tells you to do. Do it because that's the right thing to do. No. Scripture teaches us the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Then the last thing that we're going to just look at this, uh, the, this, this Bible study is the unsaved delights in deception. They love it. They, they flourish in deception. Proverbs 21, uh, 20 verse 17 says, Bread gained by the seed is sweet. <laughs> Bread gained by the seed is sweet. That's somebody uh, getting a, a piece of land. Nah? But they deceive the people into selling the land. And they get it at a much better price. So they get it fraudulently. Nah? So at first when they get the land. Or if somebody cheats somebody else out of bread or out of money. And then they go and buy something from it. At first it, it is like it, it's sweet. It's sweet to that person. But Proverbs 20 verse 7 continues to say. But afterwards his mouth will be filled with gravel. Now let me tell you, if you if you eat bread and it tastes nice and it's easy to swallow, especially if it's soft and it's it's just um, baked and, and whoa, it's just amazing, comes out of the oven, nice butter on it, whatever. It's just amazing. It, it just tastes so good. But if you got that bread through the seat, at first it will taste sweet, it will be nice, but afterwards, this is what Proverbs tells us, that person's mouth will be filled with gravel. This is kind of a Hebrew expression, uh, which tells you that it, you will get into trouble. It's like eating bread and the next moment it turns into gravel. Uh, you're going to break your teeth. You're going to be in trouble because you're going to break your teeth. You'll have to go to the dentist and maybe they're going to pull all your teeth and give you false teeth. Uh, that's just a picture that I see in my mind. But let me tell you, it's so, so dangerous to, to be deceitful. Nah? To, to delight in deceit and to think, oh, it's so nice to be deceitful. Because at first it is. Very nice to deceive somebody else and get, get away with it. So easy to talk nonsense to somebody else and then get away with it. Withholding the truth or distorting the truth and then get away with it. Bring false witness and that kind of thing. Tell lies and, and get away with it. But... Let me tell you, afterwards, your mouth will be filled with gravel. It is going to turn or get you into trouble. And why do I say that? Because there is a judge that will judge the world in righteousness. If God does not judge you now, and God doesn't discipline you now, and God's wrath doesn't come upon a person now because they have been deceiving others, then there's going to be a day of judgment when everybody will stand before God and give an account for everything they do. I always think of it when politicians lie, when business people lie, when, when, when um, people lie to you where they promise you something and they don't do it. 
uh, if people lie to you in your face or give you half truths or mistruths or mis mislead you in in whatever way there's going to be a day of reckoning there's going to be a day when the king of kings and lord of lords will not come to this earth as the suffering lamb of god or the suffering servant who came to serve his people and to take, give his life for their sin no he's going to come back and he is going to judge this world in righteousness and what a day it's going to be and watch out people who are involved in deception need to watch out because god is not somebody to play with let's leave it there let's have a word of prayer father thank you so much that we can come to you in jesus name and thank you father that we can learn more about deception and help us, Lord, not to deceive. Help us to speak the truth in love. To love our neighbor as our, we love ourselves and love you above all things. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that the Lord will bless you. That you will be obedient to him in all things. That he will keep you and that his face will shine upon you. And that he will give you his peace that only he can give. And that you will be able to see deception from a mile and not be involved in deception yourself. I pray that for you and for me for this coming week. Until we speak again, God willing, bye-bye.